Have you started to use Microsoft Teams in your business? How much of Microsoft Teams are you actually using? Well, whether you're new to Microsoft Teams and you want a bit of an overview, or you've been using Microsoft Teams for a while, this video is for you. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards. I've got a business called Integral IT, and we help businesses all over the world with their Microsoft 365 and the cybersecurity. Microsoft Teams usage has exploded over the last few years. Savvy business owners are now using Microsoft Teams as their primary communication and collaboration tool. Now, in a few moments, we're going to jump onto that computer behind me and I'm going to give you a brief overview of Microsoft Teams. We're going to cover things like the chat function, which is a little bit like WhatsApp for your business. We'll also talk about the core Teams feature, which is called Teams. A team could be a department or a function within your business. Then within Teams, there's something called channels. We'll discuss everything. Plus, you might not know that you can use Microsoft Teams to centralize all your file storage. You can have all your files and folders all within Teams. Plus, you can use Microsoft Teams as your telephone system. Now, without further ado, let's jump on that PC behind me and I'll show you how to use Teams in your business. So firstly, how do you access Microsoft Teams? Well, there's a few different ways. Firstly, you can access the web version of Microsoft Teams. You just need to log into portal.office.com with your Microsoft 365 details. Down the left-hand side, you can see I've got Microsoft Teams here. If it doesn't show there, I can simply go to the app launcher and it'll show all of my Microsoft 365 applications. Another way to access it is to just go straight to teams.microsoft.com and that is the main link for Microsoft Teams web. That should open my Microsoft Teams in the web. It's the same result as if I clicked on this Teams here. So you can see there's my Teams there. You can also, and what I do recommend you do, is actually install Microsoft Teams onto your computer. So this is the web version here. To do that, I go to the top right-hand corner, I click on here, and you can see it says, download the desktop app. I've also got an option to install Microsoft Teams on our mobile device. To do that, I'm using an iPhone, so you go into the App Store, you search for Microsoft Teams, and you install it as you would do any other app on your phone. Nice and simple. Now I'm going to close this and I'm going to minimize this because you can see I've actually got Microsoft Teams installed on my computer. So I'll open it now. So the first thing I want to do is look down the left hand navigation here. These are all our options. And you can see at the moment I'm in chat. So what is chat? Well, you can see here I've got various chats going on with different people within my business. Now we can chat one on one with directly with people or we can get into a group chat. Now the chat function in Microsoft Teams for me is comparable to something like WhatsApp. It's just a way to send messages to each other. I can simply type a message in here like fancy a coffee and I can click on enter and that will send it. Or what I can do is I can click on the format tab here and I'm going to get more options here. So I've got all my formatting tabs, bold, italic, underlines. We can add tables in there. We've got a lot more options. Now down the bottom navigation, we can highlight this chat has been important. So we can highlight it there. We can attach attachments onto there, GIFs. We can create videos on here, create meetings. We've got a lot of different options with these chats. Also, I don't have to chat one-on-one. -on -one. So if I wanted to create a new chat, I would go to the top corner here, click on new chat, and then I'd simply type in the members of the team that I wanted to include in this chat. As I said earlier, this is very much, and this creates a new chat featuring these people. But as I said earlier, this is very much like WhatsApp in business. Now, most businesses that I know start using Teams purely as a chat function and lots of them don't move past that stage. Now, using primarily chat isn't recommended for a couple of reasons. Often, it's very one-to-one, -one, so lots of people in your business might, know, might not know what's going on in certain situations. Plus, the most important thing for me, it can get really noisy, 
especially when you're using full chats. So we've got a full chat here, and what it's like is lots of different people in a room together, all talking over each other, and that can get quite overwhelming at times. For me, the chat function is just like I've used it there. If I want to say to Simon, do you fancy a coffee or something more social like that, I would use it on a chat function. Quick questions, quick answers. So if I don't recommend the chat function for your business communications, what, do you, what else do you use Teams for? Well, you use something called Microsoft Teams. It's the namesake of the application itself. If we look down the left hand side, you can see I've got an option called Teams. So I'll click on that. Now, as you can see here, with Teams, you can separate your business communications into different areas of your business, different departments, different containers. And that way you can separate out all the conversations, all the files and folders and all the apps into those different areas. Now, you can see an example here how this Teams has been set up. We've got a team called Integral IT, okay? And within that team, we've got different channels. So for example, we've got a channel called Accounts. Now you can see it's got a little padlock next to it. What that means is only certain people have access to that channel. Now within that channel, we've got all the correspondence to do with accounts. So things like chasing invoice or payments that we've got to make. Then all the files and folders connected to accounts are also in that channel. To show you a little bit more, let's go down to this one here. This is called test channel. You can see we've got posts, so we've got all the conversations to do with this channel. So for example, there's a conversation here. I've said there's a new client, Joe Blocks. What I've also done is copied Simon into this because I want him to know about that. Now Simon has come back to me and he's asked me a question. I can reply to this question quite easily something like that. And so everything to do with this new client, this conversation is all in this space here. If we go on to want to start a new conversation, then we can simply click on new conversation and a new conversation, I can just click on format. I can add a subject, another new client, Percy blogs. Okay. And what you see happening here, this is another. And when I said that, what you can see happening here is lots of different conversations happening. Now, what everybody who is a member of this channel can see is all the different conversations. So they can jump in if they need to, or if anybody copies them into a conversation. So if I copy in Simon again, I simply go the at sign and start typing his name. Simon will get a notification. It will appear here at the top in activity. So anytime people have mentioned me or tag me, it will appear here. So this is always a good place to start in Teams. I can then toggle this on. So if I've not read any, this will list all the conversations that I've not currently read. Fortunately, I'm all caught up. So if we just go back to Teams again, back to our test channel. Now you can see here, this is the post section, but we've also got different areas along the top. We've got files. So now we've created a channel, there's a file structure that has been created and it's called the test channel, which is named after our channel. Now this is just like a backend SharePoint site. So if I click on here, it will open this in SharePoint. So as soon as I create a channel in Teams, a SharePoint site will be created. But what Microsoft want you to do is just purely work in Microsoft Teams. Why not? So what we can do here, we can click on new, we can create folders. And within those folders, we can create documents. So we've got Word documents, Excel documents, PowerPoint presentation documents. The goal of Teams, what Microsoft are trying to do is that this is the, your core productivity and communication application. It brings all of your other applications together. What we can also do with these files, we can upload new files, we can copy links, we can share them, we can do a lot of things. So everything, going back to the analogy about the accounts, we've got an area in there and it's got all the files and folders to do with our accounts department. And then along the top as well, we've got notes. So what is notes? Well, if you've heard of OneNote, so when you create a channel again, a OneNote 
notebook has been created. So that's here now. We can add notes. So again, going back to accounts, we could have a lot of to-dos, a lot of processes, all in OneNote notebooks. Okay, so they're the things that are added as default. You can see it's a really blank canvas. You can design this exactly how you want it, exactly how your business works. Then next to notes, there's a plus icon. So if I click on this, we can add so much more to tabs, okay? We can add task and planners to a tab. So going back to the accounts department, we could have common tasks, common processes, and they could be across the top in our channel. We can add Microsoft lists and stream. I've done videos about that, that in those in previous weeks. You can refer back to those. Also, you can see Trello and lots more different applications. So, so many third-party companies have now built applications that plug directly into Microsoft Teams. So, it's a really exciting time for the platform. So, hopefully, that's given you a good introduction into Microsoft Teams. What you could also do here, as I say, we've got one team, lots of different channels. You could separate that even further. So, at the top here, you can see there's a marketing team and then you could put all your different marketing departments or marketing functions as channels. So you can really separate it out. Then if we just hop over to calls, so with this, we can easily take and receive calls from people within our business, okay? We can do it on the app on our phones as well. What a lot of businesses don't know, which you can do now, is you can replace your business telephone system with Microsoft Teams. You can port your existing numbers into Microsoft Teams and it can be a fully functional phone system. Again, for people who are now working in more of a hybrid way, working from home and in the office, all they need is a headset on and access to Microsoft Teams. They don't need physical phones on their desks. Using Teams as a phone system is getting more and more popular. Then we move on to the calendar. Now this calendar is fully synchronized with my Outlook calendar, okay? So I don't have to go into my Outlook calendar, I can just go into my Teams calendar. Now, once I'm in the calendar, if I want, I can schedule a new meeting. So I'll just click on New Meeting. This will also link to my calendar, but I can just call this Test Meeting. I can add the attendees. So I'm not gonna do with this test, but I could add anybody I wanted to join this meeting. Of course, we've got the date, the time, the re repetition, we can add the different channels in there if we want, and we can put some details. For the sake of this tutorial, all I'm gonna do here is click on save. And this will join here. So you can see I've got a test meeting, so I'll click on here, and I can join this meeting by clicking at the top. Now, once this opens here, hi. So you can see here that my webcam switched on and I'm already to join the meeting. Now you can see here, I've got a bit of a funny background. I can click on effects and avatars. I can click on no background. And what that shows is my rather messy home office. What I could do is click on blur. That blurs the background. So again, I've got lots of different backgrounds. I can use lots of different effects. Then simply I can choose the computer audio. I can join by phone if I want. And when I'm ready, I can simply click on join the meeting. Now that I'm in the meeting, you can see I've got lots of different options here. The camera, the mic, I can share my screen. I click on there. That means I can share my screen. If I want to do some kind of presentation, that's usually quite helpful. And I can also chat as well. So I can, if people are on the meeting and I want to say I am talking about this, something like that, and I can chat with other people whilst we're on the meeting. So once the meeting's over, I can simply click on leave. That is the video conferencing meeting side of Teams. And then we've got files here. So again, this is all my file structure. I can access my OneDrive. I can access all the uh, team, all the SharePoint sites that I'm a member of. So as I've said earlier, Microsoft Teams, it's just bringing communication and collaboration together. Now, I hope you've enjoyed that video. This is just a brief overview of Microsoft Teams. I'm sure you can see the power that it could have in your business. I look forward to seeing you again soon.